Hey everybody, it's Miss Bell here from the Science Lab, and in my video today, we get to talk about something really cool. Before I tell you what it is, I want you to make a guess. What is your prediction on what Miss Bell might be talking about in my video today? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you already know, maybe you don't, but do you want some clues just in case? Yeah? Okay. Here's clue number one. Let's see what it is. Okay. That's clue number one. Here's clue number two. Here we go. Hop. Hop. Jump. Jump. And let me move on to clue number three. What do you think this might be? Hmm, where have you seen one of these before? If you've ever seen one, they kind of crawl and critter on the ground. And here's clue number four. Okay, so my four examples over here, my four clues are all examples of, what do you think? They're examples of insects. Very, very good. Okay, so my video is going to be about insects, but not just about insects. We are going to be talking about the life cycle of insects. All insects do not have the same life cycle. And that's okay because all insects are different, just like all animals are different and all plants are different. Um, but every living organism has a life cycle. We as humans, we have a specific life cycle. Maybe your pet dog, your pet cat, your pet fish, they have their own life cycle depending on whatever type of species that animal is. Before I go any further, I want you to take a look at some of these pictures of me as a baby. This is also me as a little kiddo. And this is me a little older. And then this is me as a teenager. And then this is me in my 20s. And then this is me right now. Do you see how I look different? Do you see how um, not only my appearances change as I get older in life, but also some of my behaviors change as well? When I was a newborn baby, I did a lot of different things um, than I do now. Usually I slept a lot. I might have cried, I would eat, and I would peep and poop. <laughs> um, and that's what babies do. But then as we get older, we do different types of behaviors. We start learning to do things. We can read and write, we can do math. As I got into um, my teenage stage of life, I became independent, I started driving. When I got even older, I um, had a kiddo, I became a mom, I got a full-time job, so on and so forth. So my behaviors were changing as I went from stage to stage in my life as a human. But insects kind of go through the same thing, but it looks way different than a human life cycle. So with my video we're going to be focusing just on insects and all of the different stages that they go through during their life you ready i know i am okay here we go ah! all right so when you talk about the life cycle specifically of an insect that just means you're talking about a series of changes that a particular insect goes through during its lifetime and these stages are pretty much the same in all insects as far as it is first born then it grows up 
then it becomes an adult. It will try to reproduce to um, make offspring or like little babies and then it will die. But insects can go through different styles of a life cycle. One style is where an insect goes through four different stages. That's right, one, two, three, four. And my letters represent what those stages are called. E is for eggs, L is for larva, P is for pupa, and A is for adult. I'll go over these later, I promise. An example of an insect that goes through four stages, that would be maybe a bumblebee or a butterfly. And then there is the life cycle that only has three stages. One, two, and then three. The first stage would be E for egg, N for nymph, and A for adult. And yeah, I'll go over these as well later on in my video. And an example of an insect that goes through three stages, well, that might be maybe a dragonfly or a grasshopper. So here's a model of one of our insects that goes through four stages of its life cycle, and that is our butterfly. Now with our butterfly, an adult is going to lay the eggs somewhere that is safe, and eventually those eggs are going to hatch and turn into caterpillar. Um, we also would call this um, larva, so kind of the same thing, caterpillar or larva. And this caterpillar is going to eat, 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 munch, 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 and grow bigger, and eventually it's going to kind of hang upside down um, from wherever it feels safe. Uh, might be camouflaged, it might be on the bottom of a leaf, and it's going to form a pupa. Another word for pupa is chrysalis, so here is my pupa. And while this um, larva is inside its cocoon, another word for pupa or chrysalis, cocoon, um, it's going to transform from um, one type of look to a different type of look and eventually it's going to emerge as a butterfly. Butterflies can look um, different as far as color and sizes and the shape of its wings but this is the cycle um, that has four stages. So um, another example of an insect that goes through four stages would be our honeybee. Um, here is what the first stage looks like with its eggs. Here is the second stage with the larva. Here is the third stage. And of course, our honeybee is the very fourth stage. So egg, larva, pupa, honeybee. Another um, example would be our ladybug. Here are all of those eggs. The eggs are going to hatch and turn into a larva. It's going to eat, 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 grow, grow, grow in size, and then eventually it's going to um, go through complete metamorphosis, making those um, changes while it's inside the pupa. and eventually it's going to emerge as a ladybug. And just because I'm feeling up to it, let's go with one more example of an insect that goes through four stages. That would be our ants. Here is the first stage. This is our egg. Those eggs are going to hatch into larva. And then um, a larva is going to um, make that transformation inside the pupa. It's going to go through metamorphosis and then eventually um, 
an ant will emerge from that pupa. So what I'm going to do right now is kind of a arts and crafts um, activity where I'm going to show and make the four different stages of a butterfly's life cycle. So for this first stage, we know that this stage is the egg stage. And adults are going to lay their eggs near food that they like to eat because we know that once these eggs hatch, the larva, um, also known as the caterpillars, are going to eat, eat, eat tons of food. So that's why eggs are laid near food that um, this insect likes to eat. For example, moths or butterflies are going to lay their eggs maybe near leaves. Dung beetles um, are attracted, believe it or not, to kind of animal poop, so they might lay their eggs near that. Flies like meat, so they might lay their eggs on um, maybe some rotting meat. And eggs in general um, with insects might have different looks. Um, some might be round or oval, and as far as their texture goes, well, some might be smooth, some might be bumpy, some might be wrinkled. And it depends on how long it takes for these eggs to hatch depending on the um, species itself. Sometimes it only takes a few weeks, other times it might depend on the weather and if it's warm enough for that egg to hatch so that that insect can live and thrive in its habitat. Um, remember, in this first egg stage, the insect is unborn. It's not moving. And eventually, when it comes time, this egg is going to hatch from the first egg stage to the second stage, which is the larva stage. So moving on to the second stage, we would call this the larva stage. When you talk about just one, the word is larva, but when you talk about two or more, like in the plural form, it would be pronounced larvae. But larva is the same thing as a caterpillar when we're talking about the butterfly life cycle, but other words that you might hear when you're talking about the larva stage are maybe grubs or maggots. And these are what hatches out of the eggs. And larva is a eating machine. They eat so much food during this second stage. Um, some insects can eat so much food that it's almost maybe more than their body weight. Um, that's how much food that they gobble up during this second stage. And because um, they eat and eat and eat so much, they can almost maybe destroy crops um, because maybe they're eating tons of fruits and veggies or maybe they just devour leaves. They might even weaken or kill trees because of um, gobbling up and almost damaging the nearby, the nearby uh, plants and crops. So during this second larva stage, we know that these are the young, um, newly born offspring. They're going to eat a lot. Um, most of the time, they're almost going to look like a worm. They might start smaller and get bigger and bigger because they're eating so much. And especially the caterpillar, like in the butterfly um, life cycle, they are going to shed their skin, maybe all the way up to five times because 
Um, their skin is becoming too tight because of eating too much and growing so much in size. So they are going to shed their skin um, a good amount of times during this second stage. Some um, larvae might um, be hairy, some might not, some might look different as far as stripes or maybe even dots, but for the most part they're all going to have legs, they're all going to crawl, and of course they're all going to eat, eat, eat. And because they eat so much, most um, larvae have big, big mouths because um, of the need to eat tons of food. They have to eat tons of food in order to have enough energy to finally um, move into the third stage of their life cycle and turn into an adult. So when you're talking about this third stage, we call it the pupa stage. When you say pupa, you're only referring to one, but if you're talking about two or more, so plural, we would pronounce that pupae. But pupa is the same thing as a cocoon. We could also call this a chrysalis. And this is when um, this particular insect is changing shape inside this pupa. Now these cocoons are made to protect this insect. Um, some are kind of this hard material, almost like an outer shell. Some are maybe made out of milk. It just depends on that particular insect. But inside the pupa, you are going to see a transformation. We call this a metamorphosis. This complete metamorphosis is going from one thing to another. And we know that our larva is like an immature, very young insect. But then, as this metamorphosis happens, this transformation is going from that larva to an adult butterfly. And you can find these pupae either on leaves or wherever the insect feels that a place is safe and hidden from possible predators. Inside this pupa, as this insect is transforming from um, the young larva to an adult, especially with the butterfly, um, that butterfly is going to grow tissue and or organs and limbs and especially wings. Um, that's what this transformation is happening inside the pupa. Um, when you look at a pupa, of course it's going to be hanging from something. Um, it might vary in whatever color it is. Sometimes they're camouflage, sometimes they're dark in color. And for the most part, these pupa are going to be dormant just like when we talked about plants being dormant. There's no movement, um, nothing is really happening on the outside of this pupa. The insect is not eating, um, it just stays inside this little sack um, because things are happening inside. So in this fourth final stage in the life cycle of a butterfly, we would call this the adult stage. This is where we see that adult butterfly kind of breaking free and leaving the pupa. And as it emerges from this cocoon, we get to see that beautiful fully transformed body. It looks nothing like it did when it first entered the pupa. The larva stage looks completely opposite than the adult stage because a caterpillar looks nothing like a butterfly. 
but adult butterflies are going to leave the pupa and they are going to do some things that they couldn't really do in that young larva stage. For one, they're going to fly around because they have wings now. They also have antennas. Um, before they had really short legs, but now they have long legs, six legs to be exact. And as they fly around, they're going to eat. They're going to drink nectar and they're going to help pollinate flowers. Also, they are going to find a mate because in this adult stage, they are ready to reproduce in order to create offspring or to create more eggs, which would complete that life cycle and start more and more life cycles. Um, after butterflies emerge from the pupa, like once it splits open and they start leaving that pupa sac, um, their wings aren't going to be exactly ready for takeoff. Um, because they've been scrunched so tightly in that cocoon, once they come out of it, it takes them a little while to make their ring make their wings ready um, for flying. So um, some butterfly wings are kind of like wet and wrinkled and not very strong. So they have to wait a little while for those wings to dry off, for them to become strong and for them to become unwrinkled. Because if you try to fly with wrinkly, weak, wet wings, it is not going to be a success. So that is the life cycle of insects that have four stages. One, two, three, four. Now let's talk about the insects that have life cycles in three stages. So if they have four, we would call this a complete metamorphosis. You talk about that later in higher grades. Complete. When you talk about three stages, it's considered incomplete metamorphosis. So, with an incomplete metamorphosis, it just has three stages. And an adult insect is going to lay those eggs. And when the eggs hatch, they are going to turn into what we call a nymph. That's the second stage. A nymph is just a small, small, small version of what an adult looks like. And it might vary from insect to insect, but um, they are going to eat a lot and they're going to grow in this nymph stage. Some insects might not have wings in this stage, or if they do have wings, their wings start off really, really small and maybe get bigger and bigger as they morph into their adult stage. Now the third and final stage um, in this incomplete metamorphosis is what we call an adult stage. Very, very similar to the four stage life cycle. So an adult is fully developed. Um, they have wings, they have six legs, um, and they're able to reproduce and make offspring. Um, which is then they lay eggs and this cycle continues, continues, continues. So let's talk about another example. That was a cockroach example, but what about my praying mantis? This type of insect goes through the three stages, that incomplete metamorphosis. Let's look at what that first stage looks like. So here I have here. Oh. This is what their eggs look like. Um, it's inside like this foam stuff. It's kind of soft. That's where all the eggs are. And then eventually those eggs, um, that case is going to harden. And eventually those nymphs are going to um, kind of emerge 
from that egg case. As you can see, some of my little nymphs are right here. They're so small, they're so small. Again, um, it's not like a caterpillar, like our butterflies. They are nymphs. They're a smaller, smaller version of what our praying mantis is going to look like. And then um, they get bigger and bigger and bigger because they're eating, eating, eating lots and lots and lots of food. And eventually they're going to turn into an adult and they're going to look like this. So pretty cool um, life cycle, whether it's three stages or four stages, four stages or three stages. Um, similarities and differences, but very cool how these insects are born and then they change, they become adults and eventually they reproduce um, to get offspring and eventually die off. So let's take a look at that final product of our four stage um, life cycle with butterflies. Remember, two adults are going to come together and reproduce and the female is going to lay eggs. Those eggs are going to hatch into a larva. The second stage, the larva is going to eat, eat, eat and grow, grow, grow and then eventually they are going to go into the third stage, the pupa stage. From there, this is where the transformation is happening. The complete change from caterpillar to butterfly or from the young offspring to the adult. And inside this cocoon, um, that's where we see all these changes happening. So going from the pupa stage, the third stage, to the fourth stage, the adult stage, um, we can see that butterfly emerging from the pupa. And then guess what? The cycle begins all over. Two adults are going to come and reproduce. The female's going to lay the egg. The eggs are going to hatch into a larva. <laughs> The larva is going to grow big and eventually go um, to the pupa stage and then from the pupa stage to the adult stage over and over and over. So we know that insects that have these four stages, we know that the young offspring is going to look completely different than the adult just like our butterfly. This caterpillar or this larva looks nothing like the adult butterfly. But on the other hand, the insects that have three stages, like our grasshoppers and our cockroaches, well, when those new um, offspring are hatched, they look pretty similar to the adults small differences here and there, maybe like they don't have wings, but those nymphs are going to look exactly pretty much like the adults. And that's kind of the difference of the four stage and the three stage. So if those are differences, what about similarities between those types of life cycles? Well, in the four stage life cycle and the three stage life cycle, we know that they both start with eggs that have to hatch. And with both um, styles of life cycles, they both end with adults. So that's kind of cool when you compare and contrast those types of life cycles. But that's what's so cool about life cycles. They are happening everywhere around us because like I mentioned all living things have their own unique life uh, cycle um, that pertain to whatever species they are and life cycles just help us create more and more offspring for future generations thanks so much for joining me guys and watching my video I hope you enjoyed it I will see y'all next time. Okay. Bye.